In this video, I want to provide an introduction to the score test, which is also known as the Lagrange multiplier test. And hopefully, as well as introducing the test, I can provide some intuition behind the basis for the test. In order to talk about this test, we first need to define what we actually mean by score. So score in the multivariate case is typically a vector. And what are the elements of that vector? Well, the first component of that vector is the derivative of log likelihood with respect to the first parameter in the model, so call that theta1. The next element of our vector is the derivative of log likelihood with respect to theta2. And the idea is that we would continue building our score vector by evaluating the derivative of likelihood with respect to each of the parameters in our model. And the idea is that we might be able to evaluate these derivatives and these derivatives will correspond to functions of the parameters. So the first function which we get from this top derivative, we might represent by f1 of theta, where theta is all the parameters in our model now. So I'm talking about a vector of parameters. And then the second element might be represented by f2 of theta, and then we would sort of continue for all the other elements. Okay, so that's what we mean by the score vector. What about the particular form of the score test? So I'm gonna call this test statistic LM, and it turns out that LM in the sort of multivariate case is given by the score vector evaluated at the parameter values under the null hypothesis being true, so evaluated at theta zero. It's that all transposed times the inverse of the variance of our parameter estimates evaluated at theta zero, all inverted here, and then finally times the score vector evaluated at theta zero, and note that I haven't transposed this final term. And it turns out under the null hypothesis being true that this is chi-squared distributed with q degrees of freedom. And there is something that strikes us quite immediately about this test, and it contrasts it from the other tests to which we've already spoken about. Essentially, none of these terms actually involve the unconstrained maximum likelihood estimates of the parameters. These are just the values of the parameters under the null hypothesis being true. So in some ways that can make this test beneficial. It's particularly beneficial if we don't actually want to evaluate the maximum likelihood estimates of our parameters. So that might be particularly difficult in the case where we're dealing with a very highly dimensional um, model where I'm talking about being highly dimensional in the numbers of parameters. So this is the form of the score test in the multivariate case. But again, just like before, I'm going to illustrate the intuition behind this test by considering the univariate case. In the univariate case, these score vectors, as well as this variance term, are all scalar. So the order of multiplication doesn't matter, and we get a term as our numerator, which is the score evaluated at theta zero, all squared, and the denominator is just the variance of our parameter estimates at theta zero, so now we can talk about the intuition behind this particular test. So the idea is that under the maximum likelihood estimates of the parameters, then we know that for the maximum likelihood estimates of our parameter, the score vector, which in this case is just a scalar, is going to be equal to zero, because the idea is that we have maximized log likelihood with respect to that parameter. So the gradient of log likelihood with respect to that particular parameter, evaluated at the maximum likelihood estimates, is defined to be zero. So this is the value of score under the maximum likelihood estimates of the parameters. However, we're not evaluating the score at the maximum likelihood estimates of the parameters, we're evaluating it at theta zero. And in general, this isn't going to be zero because we haven't in general maximized likelihood with respect to that particular parameter. So again, what we can do is we can draw a likelihood function for a given set of data. So the y-axis here represents the likelihood and the x-axis here represents the particular value of that parameter. And a given likelihood might look something like this. So the idea is that we have a null hypothesis for that particular parameter and it might be represented by theta zero here. So what we can do is we can draw a sort of dotted line up to our value of likelihood and we can evaluate the score at that particular point. And the score is just given by the gradient of our likelihood function. 
And notice that the way in which I've actually drawn the score here, it looks as if the score is nowhere near zero, which note that it is at the maximum likelihood estimates of our parameters. So because the score is actually quite large here, this is going to make our numerator quite large. And if our numerator is quite large, assuming that we have a relatively low variance, that means that we're going to get quite a large value for this particular test statistic. And remember that under the null hypothesis being true, this LM statistic is chi-square distributed with one degree of freedom. So if we get a large value of LM, which is a long way away from zero, then it is quite unlikely that we actually would have actually obtained that value of LM if the null hypothesis was true, hence we reject the null hypothesis. And that makes intuitive sense because if the score is quite large, in other words, the gradient of likelihood is quite high, then that means that we're nowhere near our sort of optimal choice of the parameter. Hence, we shouldn't actually go with those estimates of the parameter and we should use maximum likelihood estimates. Note that this would be different if we chose a value of theta zero, which was actually quite close to the maximum likelihood estimates. In that circumstance, the gradient might be that much less steep, and hence we wouldn't be able to reject the null hypothesis that the parameters are actually given by theta zero. And note again that even though I've illustrated this example in the univariate case, the sort of intuition behind the multivariate case where we're talking about a vector of parameters is exactly the same.